All right, let's talk about how you size your deck footings. This is gonna be found in a chart in chapter five of the IRC. All right, the first column is the live or ground snow load. You're going to use whichever is greater and then add it to the dead load. So the typical live load for a deck is 40 pounds per square foot. And the snow load in my area is 20 pounds per square foot. So we're going to use the greater, which is 40, and then add it to the dead load. The normal dead load for our, a deck is 10 pounds per square foot. But if you're using some special materials, you'll need to figure it out. So we're going to use our live load, 40 pounds per square foot, plus our dead load, 10 pounds per square foot. And that's going to put us in the 50 pounds per square foot zone. If you're in an area that gets a lot of snow, like Minnesota, you'll have to look up your ground snow load for your area. Tributary area is the next column, and it's pretty tricky, so we're gonna try to explain this as best we can. Use this deck as an example, and we're gonna say that it is 16 feet long by 12 feet wide. It's supported on one side by the house, and then by two beams, each supported by three columns. And just to make the math easy, we're going to say that everything is evenly spaced apart. This is obviously not to scale, but remember it's 12 feet wide by 16 feet long. And it's supported by six columns and then by the house on the other side. To figure out the tributary area, you just need to find the middle point between each support. That's gonna look something like this. And that's gonna give us four feet, eight feet, and four feet wide but you need to calculate the middle point going the other direction as well. And that's gonna look a little something like this. And obviously that's gonna be three feet, six feet, and three feet wide. So now just multiply to get the tributary area. We know three times four is 12 square feet. And then six times four is 24 square feet. Three times four again for 12 square feet. Now we're at eight times three for 24 square feet. Eight times six for 48 square feet. And again, eight times three for 24 square feet. This bottom area is 12 times four for 48 square feet. But remember, we don't need to know the tributary area for that spot. We only needed to know it for the top six areas because those are the only areas getting footings. That's how you calculate the tributary area. All right, the next section is the load bearing value of your soil. And you're gonna have the options of 1,500, 2,000, or 3,000 pounds per square foot. So your deck is pretty much supported by the dirt where it's not attached to the house, uh, which is why you need to know the soil bearing capacity. Well, the code allows you to just use a chart in the code book in lieu of a full geotechnical survey. So if it's clay, sandy clay things like that you can it's the 1500 pounds per square foot if it's sand silty sand it's 2000 and then if it's sandy gravel or gravel it's 3000 and then of course if it's rock or stuff it's above that anyway all right my backyard's all clay so we're going to use the 1500 pounds per square foot load bearing capacity uh column here so we established earlier that we had 50 pounds per square foot for the live load plus the dead load uh, we established some tributary areas um, of 12 24 and 48 so we've got we're going to use the 20 40 and 60 rows i'm going to use some circles so that leaves us with 13 17 and 21 inch uh, footings and they're all going to be six inches thick. So that is how you size your deck footings.